So virtual reality and archaeology, or this could be termed more 3D reconstructions in archaeology. Archaeologists were relatively early to take up VR and 3D in archaeology, with Paul Riley's first model appearing in 1990. Since then, we have modeled landscapes, excavations, buildings, cities, people, and environments. We've used it to test scientific questions, to communicate about the past to others, and to invite others to help construct the past. VR goes through waves of popularity. It was falling out of favor in 2009 when I wrote the article in your reading, but it is popular again through the broadening of access to tools and training. The concept of telepresence is now ubiquitous. Telepresence is where you are when you're talking on the phone. Not quite in the room or with the other person you're talking to, but somewhere in between. This is an experience mediated through screens, not fully immersive as in a fully realized space, but immersive enough. A good video game, or even a book. I will try to demonstrate some of the potentials of virtual reality through the example of Chatelhoyuk in Second Life. So my formative experience with 3D reconstructions was in reconstructing Chatelhoyuk, the Neolithic site in Turkey, in Second Life as outlined in the assigned reading. This was done with a team of archaeologists and technologists at the University of California, Berkeley. Second Life launched in 2003 and is still running. It is similar to massively multiplayer online role-playing games, but it is an open world where people create avatars and are able to interact with places, objects, and other avatars. We began with a topo map of the two tells of Chatelhoyuk. As you may note, Chatelhoyuk is actually in the middle of the Anatolian plain and not on an island, so right away you must suspend your disbelief. This was, at first, a relatively low cost to the university, but became more expensive as time went by, which presaged its downfall. The initial setup was very basic, using the 1960s Mellart plan of the site to reconstruct Neolithic mud brick houses. This was accompanied by a not very Neolithic screen, where we watched movies and presentations about Chatelhuyuk. The space was very much intended to be mixed use, not a fully immersive photorealistic version of the Neolithic. Now, over time, this initial model was elaborated considerably with textures, architectural details, and more interactive elements. Again, the early version was very basic, and this is the initial reconstruction of a tented excavation area on site. Followed by this more realistic reconstruction, modeled using textures that were created from photos and plants that were modeled on those found on site. The initial interiors were also basic, like boxes and contained museum-like displays. We were able to elaborate these considerably, try for some realistic lighting, interiors based on archaeological evidence, and possibly slightly creepy avatars. We tried to reconstruct some of the Neolithic environment, the nearby river and wildlife. You can see an aurochs there in the background. And I realized at some point that most reconstructions of Chatelhuyuk are during the summertime, perhaps showing the bias of the archaeologists who always had summer field seasons. So we made it snow and tried to understand where the snow would have fallen on the mud brick houses and what, what effects the architecture. I also reconstructed the excavation house as increasingly archaeologists who worked at Chatelhuyuk were visiting and using the virtual space to chat with each other. We created Neolithic clothing, decorated with stamp seals found on sites, and we recreated avatars. It was difficult to create avatars that reflected a broader population and some of our knowledge about the bioarchaeology on site, as most Second Life people are about seven foot tall and are magazine perfect, or furries. We held a number of events, including one that recreated a fire on site. This was based on evidence found on site, and you can see me here again excavating a house that was burned. And here is the top view of a similar house. Later, I recreated an interior with evidence precisely taken from the archaeological record. 
Most 3D reconstructions are conglomerations of evidence taken from multiple sources. To show this adherence to realistic evidence, I labeled the reconstruction with the feature numbers as they were excavated on site. There was one problem, and this you may surmise from the image with my avatar in it. That avatar should be my height, 165 centimeters. The house was incredibly compact. I'm on the tall side for a Neolithic person from Chatelhuyuk, but still. Most reconstructions of Chatelhuyuk to this point showed spacious, airy, light rooms, whereas from what I could tell, most people would have had to squat down most of the time they are inside. This, combined with the archaeological evidence from a collapsed house, convinced me that there were at least two and possibly three stories on some of these houses. We had been, effectively, excavating basements. Think about it. What do you keep in your basement, if you have one? Does it reflect much of your daily life? The interface in Second Life also allowed you to build collaboratively, which meant that you could test ideas with other archaeologists who excavated on site. This is an example of a conversation on site that shows two different conceptions of what these houses may contain. So hoarders versus minimalists. Reconstructions lay bare what people think when they are excavating. It's very revealing and mostly unspoken otherwise. This reconstruction was also visited by several members of the interested public. There was an area where they could build their own 3D models, and this was sometimes abused, but it was occasionally pretty magical. For example, this 3D model of the famous figurine of the seated woman with two leopards was reconstructed, complete with a flaming offering, probably a sign of mother goddess worship left by an enthusiast. We also created several machinima, which are videos filmed in virtual worlds. This is more popular these days with Twitch streaming, but we had students fully script and act out a drama in Chatelhuyuk in Second Life. This is the slightly emo lead actor of the machinima. Sadly, all good things come to an end. Virtual Chatelhuyuk was shuttered in 2011 for several reasons. The collaboratively built world was unsustainable and unarchivable because too many people owned the assets that were used to build the reconstruction. UC Berkeley could not afford to keep the island going forever, and Linden Labs, the makers of Second Life, increased the price of land rental for educational I was finished with the reconstruction as research with the completion of my PhD. But still, I hope I have shown you that reconstructions are good to think with. They make you investigate more thoroughly and come up with research questions and hypotheses that shed new light onto the archaeological record.